Uh -huh. Actually, there is no typical day. Because HHC is a de um, decentralized system and there are facilities in each of the five boroughs, sometimes I'm in the field the whole day, sometimes I'm in the office the whole day, sometimes I'm in the field and in the office, sometimes I'm at external, sometimes I'm at external meetings, and um, in addition, the expectation is that I'm available at all times, and thank goodness I had a BlackBerry. I was very fortunate to have both a varied and an interesting career. I spent the first 10 years d providing clinical social work in Southern California, and I was doing public health even though I didn't know it at the time. First, I worked with women alcoholics as they detoxed at the county center. And then I worked with children who had cystic fibrosis and their families at a time that 50% of the children died at age eight. And then I worked at the University of California Irvine Medical Center, working with high-risk pregnancy and with the families whose children ended up in the NICU. And in about eight years into my clinical work, I decided that I wanted to do something different. And Southern California is where everybody's concerned about earthquake preparedness. And I got involved with the local Red Cross. And while I was involved with them, I identified that there was a gap between pre-hospital and hospital mental health. It happened to be at a time that FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, was interested in bringing the medical sector into the emergency management planning, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time, and got involved with some national work that was being done. And um, at the same time, ASTM was developing emergency management service standards, and I participated in the development of the disaster standards at a time when people would say, well, what does mental health have to do with disasters? These experiences made me want to go and get a doctorate. And um, at about the same time, I gave birth to the first grandchild in the family, and my husband wanted to move back to New York where he was from. And I moved back to New York and I um, completed my doctorate at what was then the Columbia School of Public Health. And my, doctor, my dissertation was on hospital preparedness for chemical accidents. When I finished in 1990, there were no full-time jobs in preparedness. So I started out having a day job and then pursuing my academic interest. My first uh, postdoctoral job was being the project director for a site for the NIH study on asthma. It was a multi-center trial. And while I was there and on faculty at one of the New York City medical schools, I was um, exposed to research and I was exposed to national policy and I was exposed to grants. And while I was there, I wrote a grant, um, which was for the first curriculum on public health preparedness. And um, then th the funding for that job ended, and I, my next job was at the New York City Health and Hospitals Corporation, where I was responsible for the affiliation contracts between the medical schools and HHC. And I, I was there for 16 years. It was wonderful. I retired in March. Um, at that job, I was responsible for over uh, almost $900 million in uh, contracts at the end when I left. We were responsible for the restructuring and the negotiating and the monitoring of the contacts. And in the early years, um, we spent a tremendous amount of time in the field, sometimes till two in the morning negotiating these contracts. And as healthcare evolved, the contracts evolved. And it was a very interesting and exciting place to work. In the almost 40 years that I've worked in healthcare, it's constantly been evolving. But the period that we are entering right now, I think, is transformational. For 
public health care systems, uh, safety net hospitals, they're going to have even more reimbursement challenges because of the changes that are coming to their reimbursement. For systems where there aren't enough providers, it's going to be, there isn't going to be the capacity to see the number of patients that are now going to have insurance. And if Medicare reimbursement rates are too low, providers, and actually there are some providers now who don't accept Medicare, more providers will not accept Medicare, causing seniors to scramble to get care. In terms of what can be done, I think that the public health professional, whether they're in a traditional public health agency, whether they're in a healthcare system, is going to be called on to, to learn and utilize new skills that require both leadership and technology and a broadened view of what the scope of practice is. The most satisfying part of my work, particularly when I was at HHC, was to work for an organization that provided preventive care to the most vulnerable people in New York City. And also having the opportunity to intellectually think about big problems and to come up with solutions to big system-wide problems. And I, and I also enjoyed that in the work that I did um, on preparedness. When my funding ended from the uh, job where I was the project director for the NIH study, I was on the board of the Public Health Association of New York City, and a colleague who was also on the board was retiring from HHC. And he said, I'm retiring, and they're looking for somebody to fill my job, and I'll submit your resume. And he did, and it took about five months from the time he submitted it until I got the job, but that's how I ended up at HHC. Both experience and education were equally important. The experience that I had at each job prepared me for the next level of responsibility. And when I got my doctorate, it opened up and exposed me to opportunities and activities that I never would have thought about, and also provided the commitment that I wanted to really dedicate my career to public health.